Hello, and this video is intended to show, uh, show you how to use AdaCAD, which is an online tool for building woven drafts, and specifically woven drafts for frame looms or floor looms, as well as jacquard looms. So one of the things about AdaCAD that makes it a little bit different is that it runs in your web browser. So if you'd like to use AdaCAD, go ahead and visit AdaCAD, which is A-D-A-C-A-D, dash weaver dot firebase app dot com and so just the story behind the name is that it's uh, largely inspired from Ada Lovelace and we see it as a kind of computer aided design or CAD tool so if you visit that web app and and we suggest that you do it on Chrome on the Chrome browser because that's where we've done the most testing you will see this page and it says welcome to AdaCAD and there's a few different places where you can start. You can start by starting a brand new draft, loading an existing draft that you saved using our software, loading a draft that maybe you created from Photoshop in a bitmap file format, or even loading a WIF file which may have been created using a different software like Fiberworks or WavePoint. But for today, let's just say we're going to start a new draft. There's two options um, for what kind of draft we're going to use. We can organize the layout for a floor loom or for a jacquard loom. And we chose these two because the patterns of design might be slightly different. But in any mode, you actually get access to all the same features. It just makes some things a little more readily available than others. So let's select floor loom. Uh, you'll see down here that the start button is grayed out, so if I push it, nothing will happen. And that's because it requires me to fill in at least the number of warps. Um, if for some reason you close this window without filling it in, it'll just create you a file with a generic number of warps, and you can change it later. But it's always nice to start with all the information being accurate. So let's say we're making a weave draft that's... Um, 50 warps wide, 10 EPI with 8 frames, and 10 treadles. Here we go. So I see my 8 frames, my 10 treadles, my drawdown, and my tie up. Um, these features here on the top are for describing what is the color content or the material content of your different warps. And the same can be used here on the right hand side to assign different picks. Um, to different kinds of wefts, different colors, different materials, um, different weft systems. You can use this eyeball here to either hide or show um, this additional information. And part of the reason why that's interesting is because we let you design an AdaCAD by either designing in the threading or designing on the drawdown. So just to show you, if I design in the drawdown, you'll see it automatically populates my threading. And if I design in my threading, you'll see it automatically populates my drawdown. So those are kind of the basic view modes. The other ones that are allowed um, allow you to add, clone, or remove different warps. So if I want to add another warp to my draft, let's say at the top, I click plus. If I want to clone a row, I hit clone. It'll actually recreate that row for me on a second row. If I want to delete a row, I use this little trash can and I can delete that pick. Let's delete that one too, just so we keep things clean. All right, so on the top bar here, you have some of the features um, that are largely informational or that you might use the most often. And so on the About tab, you just get a little bit more information about the tool you're using, links to our documentation, as well as our version number. Um, which can be useful if you do have a problem that you want to let us know about. It's good to let us know which version number you're using. Close that. We have this undo and redo, which allows me to go back a move or replay a move. So let's say I add something and I don't want it. I can go ahead and remove that with undo and add it back with redo. Um, and you also have options to download the weave in these three different file formats. So either a bitmap for maybe opening in Photoshop, an AdaCAD file for opening in this tool a bit later, or a WIF file for opening in another tool. 
So on this right hand side we have more of your drafting tools and I'll just go ahead and open that up so we get the fuller view. If you use this button it allows you to collapse the view so that it doesn't take up as much space. So the first thing we have here um, is our view modes and this allows us to zoom the screen in and out depending on how large our file is. We can also view our draft in any three formats, either the draft, which we're looking at now, uh, the paths of the different yarns in the draft, which is really interesting uh, in some of our applications where we're using this tool to design circuits, where we really need to know how one yarn travels through a fabric rather than just the overall structure. And just to say, we've designed the default so that all the filled in cells mean that that heddle is lifted. Um, so this is a uh, black cell is a place where the weft goes under the warp and a white cell is where um, the weft goes over the warp. And that becomes more clear in this mode, which is um, our attempt at simulating uh, where where the yarns are traveling within the draft. And while some systems will take these empty rows and show a weft on them, we chose not to do that so that we can get a more accurate picture of how the yarns are actually traveling. And maybe we can see here, oh, you know, we actually need um, to catch that yarn over here on something like a selvage. And so I can actually draw in this mode as well um, and add something, maybe kind of like a selvage to my end and it'll update my draft accordingly. Okay, the next mode we have is the draft mode, and this is where you get all your tools. Um, for instance, drawing a cell, you can click this eraser to erase a cell, or there's this feature we call invert, which if you select a single cell, it'll just sort of switch it to the alternate state, given that every cell can only be up or down. This select operator allows you to select a region of the draft and perform some operation on that region. So we can go ahead and select this region and hit the X to clear it and get rid of everything in that region. Or we could fill it with a stitch. And so there's two default patterns here, tabby and double weave. But what's kind of fun is that we have this patterns library you can add as many patterns as you want, and if you want them to show up, it's something you can fill with, you just hit the star. And now you'll see that balance twill has shown up, and we can get rid of it. So you can always update this to be the stitches um, that you're using the most regularly. And when you save an ADACAD file, all this information will be saved. It won't necessarily be saved if you download a bitmap or a WIF file. Uh, if I wanted to add a new pattern, I could just select Add, and I could draw in a new pattern. But we'll get to that feature later. So, now that I've selected an area, let's say I want to fill it with a weft-faced twill. That's what it would go ahead and look like. Um, and now I'll clear it. And you'll see something funky happened there with the threading, and I'll get to what that meant just a little bit later. Another thing we can do is um, copy and paste. So if I wanted to copy uh, maybe these three um, interlacements, I could select them, I hit copy, and then I see all my options for different ways to copy. So let's say I just put another little pick next to it. I could copy the original, which is the same thing that I, I copied. I could paste the original. I could paste it inverted, so the opposite kind of um, patterning. I could paste it uh, flipped horizontally or flipped vertically, um, which in this case might be the same, no? Um, okay, still some bugs to work out, so there, <laughs> there might be things that between you watching this video and uh, me making it that I'll go into the software and fix things that maybe aren't working so properly. Um, and that's what you do when you design your own software. Let me actually go ahead and restart so I can show you some of those features. And let's say I click nothing, it gives me sort of a basic draft. Let me go in and say I have a second WEF system. Let's do regular 
and I'll do get red and I save that. Okay, now if I do my draw tool, you see how I can actually assign them here. Um, and so if I, let's say, fill this region with a stitch, each one will be assigned to those rows. Um, and what's nice here is you can actually design on each row individually. So I could hide uh, one WEF system and just view the other or hide the other. So let's say I wanted a tabby weave on each WEF system, like I wanted a two pick kind of design. I could actually go in here and select and hit tabby and it would update. And then when I opened my weave, the tabby would be isolated to that WEF system. So if I hide that now and I paste tabby again, you'll see that I get it um, continuously. So it, it sort of updates those um, picks individually. Um, another thing we can do here is we can actually, if I want this pattern to repeat the whole way, I can go ahead and use the select tool. I can select the repeating pattern of WEF systems, copy it, and then come down here and paste it the whole way. And now I've assigned all of this, um, all of my draft to this kind of repeating pattern in the WEF system. Um, to just review uh, the loom settings, uh, let's say I wanted to add more warps or I've decided that instead of having my weave be two inches wide, I want it to be five inches wide, I could go ahead and hit five, and it would add all the necessary warps. Um, if I wanted to fill that in, I would actually have to go ahead and select my repeating pattern and, and copy it across. Um, so let's hit P, and there you see it there. So one of the final things I'll show is, um, has to do with when we add information to the drawdown and have that populate the treadling. So with this repeating pattern, we're only using two frames, but you can imagine a mode where, let's say I'm gonna draw in um, some just irregularities where each one would have to be on a different frame. Over time, you might find that the design exceeds the number of frames and treadles that you have available. So let's try to exceed this, there we go. If it exceeds it, um, it adds that as another frame, but grays it out to show you that technically you don't have enough frames on your loom to recreate that design. So if you wanna go in and, and optimize your file, you could then just look at these rows that are in the extended section and move them back down. Maybe decide where you want them to go somehow. And that will sort of put it back in check. Um, and that same thing will happen on the treadling. So sometimes I just draw randomly to see what happens and then I can isolate it back down. Um, whoop, let's get all these back down. Okay, so those are the core features of AdaCAD. Um, I hope you enjoy yourselves playing with it and we should be making more videos and debugging the software so that it is more robust and useful for a wide variety of weavers. One thing I'll note is if you do wanna reopen this file, if we hit refresh, all of our information will be gone because that's what happens when we're doing work on the browser. But if we hit download weave, we can save this as an ADACAD file and it'll download to our computer. And then the next time that we run ADACAD, so I'll restart, what I can do is go ahead and select that file so it's somehow in my downloads. Oh boy, you can see my downloads are kind of a mess. Uh, let's see, it's Weave Draft 2. I hit open. First I have to hit upload and then I hit start and all my information comes back. All right, well with that, um, happy weaving.